Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. This week marks one year since the start of the full-fledged Russian invasion of Ukraine, launched in an effort to destroy its freedom and independence. To talk about life in Ukraine in times of war, we invite you to join a special Zoom meeting this Saturday, February 25th at 9 p.m. Kyiv time. I will be glad to meet you and answer all your questions regarding Ukraine, the war, and the podcast. Details are in the notes to this episode. For 364 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Head of Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, says that Russian forces conduct infantry attacks near Bakhmut wave after wave using only a few armored vehicles, reports NVUA. He added that Russian troops also get some support from the artillery forces. Budavno explained this tactic with what happened at Vuhledar, Donetsk region, where Russians extensively used armored vehicles, but they were destroyed in the first hours of the battle. The Ukrainian intelligence chief also said that from a military perspective, Ukraine holds Bakhmut to restrain the Russian forces in this area and inflict catastrophic losses on them. Head of the Donetsk Region Military Administration Pavlo Kirilenko said that Russian invaders' attacks have almost completely destroyed the cities of Avdiivka and Bakhmut in Donetsk Region, reports Ukrainska Pravda. He assessed that Avdiivka is almost completely destroyed, while the level of destruction of Bakhmut is at more than 80%. According to Kirilenko, the Russian forces unable to capture contact line cities are using scorched earth tactics. Spain has selected six Leopard 2 A4 tanks that will be sent to Ukraine. Currently, they are being refurbished, reports Interfax Ukraine. According to El País newspaper, the Spanish defense minister did not specify when exactly the tanks would be delivered to Kyiv. However, El País recalled that earlier the terms of late March and early April were discussed in Madrid. At the beginning of February, El País reported that the value of such repairs is estimated by experts at more than 500,000 euros per vehicle. At the same time, it is expected that the government of Finland on Thursday will decide whether to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine. The Finnish state broadcaster Lie informs that in total there are about 200 German-made Leopard battle tanks in Finland. Earlier, Defense Minister Mikko Savola announced that Finland would take part in the tank coalition for Ukraine. However, their number cannot be large because Finland has a long land border with Russia and Leopards are also important for the defense of Finland. Head of the President's Office of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, believes that Ukraine may become a member of NATO before joining the European Union, reports Interfax Ukraine. Yermak told the media that in the next packages of Western sanctions, visa restrictions may be introduced for Russian servicemen who took part in the war with Ukraine and their family members. The head of the Office of the President stressed that Ukraine is working to make sanctions painful and effective so that the next package includes really important sanctions. According to him, work continues on sanctions against banks and energy systems of Russia. Head of the Office of the President also believes that the UK may be the first country to supply modern combat aircraft to Ukraine and start this process. Ukraine plans to apply sectoral sanctions against all banks registered or located in Russia, including the Central Bank of the Russian Federation, insurance companies and other non-bank financial institutions, reports Ekonomichna Pravda. The sanctions are to be imposed for the period of 50 years. The National Security and Defense Council and the President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky supported proposals made by the National Bank of Ukraine. Now they have to be approved by the parliament. The former Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine and his former first deputy received a notice of suspicion of abuse of power, which caused the state more than 30 million US dollars in damage, reports Interfax Ukraine. According to the Special Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office, in 2015, the minister, together with his deputy, who was also the chairman of the Tariff Council of the Ministry of Infrastructure, issued an order allowing private companies to charge half the ship dues rate from ships in the Pivdeni seaport. This order was issued despite the fact that the water area of this port is state property and the right to charge belongs exclusively to a state enterprise. The Highlights of Ukraine is an uncommercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the apps, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. 
We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.